truly it's a blessed privilege and an honor to be in your presence this morning. I am so excited about what God's going to do, and I'm expecting him to do great things this morning. Truly, we serve an awesome God, and we ought to be willing to at least give him some praise this morning. But let us take a few minutes before we start and just give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Our God is worthy of our praise. If we, he is not worthy of anything else, he is so worthy of our praise this morning. As I was getting dressed this week, I was heading out, and I had uh, put on just a little small heel because I had a meeting that I had to go to. And, and I told myself before I left the house, to get, grab you a flat just in case this heel don't work out for you. Because I usually always had to like to keep one in my trunk. So I, so I, I put it right by my purse, and lo and behold, I got to the door and walked off and forgot it. But as soon as I got ready to go out the door, I felt this small little pain in my foot. And that pain told me, go back and get your flat because you might, these heels might not work out for you this morning. And, I, and, I, and God spoke to me. He said, pain is good for us sometimes, church. You know, we don't like it. We don't want it. But it's good for us sometimes. And that's what David said here in the Psalms that I'm going to read to you in just a minute. But it, that pain turned me around to go get something that was going to help me in the event that I had trouble later on that day. So pains are good for us. And so I want to take you right to Psalms 119. And let's look at what David said this morning in the Psalms. I want to read it from you, though, um, in the Message Bible, because it's, it just reads a little bit different. But it's, it's a more common sense approach to how he, how he says it here. And I, and I want you to know before I start in, in the Message Bible, I'm looking specifically at um, this text is in Psalms uh, 119 71 and I'm gonna read that real quick it just says in the King James Version it was good for me that I had been afflicted that I might learn thy statutes now I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to um, Psalms 11965 go up to 65 with me this morning it reads in this minute it says be good to your servant God be as good as your word train me in common sense I am thoroughly committed to living your ways before I learned to answer you, I wandered all over the place. But now I'm, I'm in step with your word. You are good and the source of good. Train me in your goodness. Anybody want to be trained up in the goodness of the Lord? Woo! We could do something with that, church. We could go so much further if our training was in the goodness of the Lord. And then he says, the godless spread lies about me. But he says, I focus my attention on what you are saying. He says, they are, they are bland as a bucket of lard, of lard for I, where, while I danced to the tune of your revelations. And then here it is. My troubles turned out for all my best. They forced me to learn from your textbook. Forced him to learn from his textbook. So troubles and pain, while they don't always seem good for us, they are always good for us. There's always some value in our pain. If we went to the doctor, we, we wouldn't even go to the doctor unless we had some pains. See, no, most people don't go to the doctor when they're feeling good. They go when there is some pain in their body. Pain tells us that there's something that's wrong, something that's unusual, something going on. So pain is good for us. And that's what David is, is teaching us here. And then he says in, in the last verse, in the last, last uh, passage, he says, Truth from your mouth means more to me than striking it rich in, in a gold mine. Isn't that good? Those words just bless me today, and I hope and pray that they have blessed you this morning because they help us to see the goodness of the Lord and help us to see that everything is working together for our good, and we're going to be all right, church. Let us go before him in prayer this morning. Our God and our Father, Lord, as we come this morning, we come first, Lord, saying thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being good. Thank you, Lord, that we have a new opportunity today, oh God. We have new mercies, God, and new grace today to, by which we'll start, God. So God, thank you for that, Lord God. We don't take it for granted, God, but we thank you for this day. God, we ask, oh God, you would just fill us now with your Holy Spirit. Fill this place with your presence, oh God. Let your joy and your peace and your, and, your, and your spirit resonate in the hearts and minds of your people, O oh God, and bless them abundantly, O oh God. Whatever they have need of this morning, O oh God, I pray, Lord God, you would just meet every need this morning, O oh God. If there's one who's suffering and wondering, O oh God, why so much pain, O oh God, 
Why so much hurt, oh God? Teach them, oh God, and show them the light, oh God. Let them feel you, oh God, and let them know, Lord God, that you have not forsaken them, oh God. Help us, oh God, to turn our eyes away from their pain this morning and to turn our eyes towards you this morning, oh God. And trust and believe, oh God, that all things are working together for our good, Lord God. Trust and believe, oh God, that you have us, oh God. Trust and believe, oh God, that you promised never to leave us nor forsake us, oh God. And trust and believe, God, on the other side of pain, God, there is a blessing, oh God. So help us, Lord, to now, to, to take our eyes and to focus solely on you, oh God. Through this worship experience, God, we just ask that you would just reign, oh God. Let your spirit, oh God, be in this place, oh God. Keep us, oh God, and keep us focused on you. And we'll be ever so careful and ever so mindful to give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. It is in your name that I pray, and I say amen, and thank you, Lord. Thank you. Give him praise, church. He's worthy.
been bad, have been good to me. So many doors, so many doors, so many ways, so many ways you made, so many times you knew. You've been bad, have been good to me. The better than good to me. So, so many doors you've opened, so many ways you made, so.
Stop giving it to him now. Anybody feel good about God today? I feel good about him every day. <laughs> Proverbs 3 says, I will write his word on my heart.
and I will write, and I will write them on the tablet of your heart. Anybody want to write? Said I will write them on oh. the tablet of hey. your heart. I am the vine, you are the branches. No one gets to the Father except that they come through me. Oh, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No one gets to the Father, listen, except that they come through me. Oh, let not mercy, let not mercy and truth, and truth forsake, us, forsake, us, forsake, us, forsake. Us. Let not mercy, let not mercy and truth, and truth forsake, us, forsake, us, forsake, us, forsake. Us. And I will write it, write them on the tablet of your heart. Anybody want to write? Anybody want to write it on? Yeah. Write them oh, on oh, the oh, of your hey. heart. Yeah. I am the way. I am the way. Oh, yeah. The truth and the light. No, no one, one gets yet. to the Father. Except through Jesus. Trust in the Lord with all your strength and lean, lean on to your own understanding. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord Whoa. with all your heart. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord hey. with all your mind. Anybody gonna trust in the trust Lord? In the Lord. But I will hide your word in my heart. God, I'm going to 
Say, God, I'm going to try your word in my heart. Woo! Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Anybody going to trust? Trust in the Lord with all your mind. Anybody going to trust? Trust in the Lord with all your strength. Say, lean not. Lean not to your own understanding. Trust in the Lord. I will write them on the yeah. tablet of your heart. Anybody gonna write? Anybody gonna write? Said I, I will, will write them oh. on the tablet of your heart. Yeah. <laughs> Said I will write. Yeah. And I will write them on the oh. tablet of your hey. heart. This thing is getting good to me. This thing is getting good to me. I will <laughs> write them on the hey. tablet of your heart. I will write it right there. Oh, say, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Let's celebrate the Lord. Come on, let's give him praise. Everybody, all the praise. Amen. 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 We certainly give God first place in this sanctuary. And I in certainly thank God for all of you who are here. We want to take this opportunity to thank God for all of you who are connecting with us on uh, Facebook and YouTube, and those of you that are in person in the sanctuary, um, I believe those words stand to be true. You have to trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And certainly we thank God for those inspiring words and the energy of that music. Amen. God is good, isn't he? Amen. Thank you, brother, for your energy. Amen. Amen. Whatever you do for the Lord, you ought to give it all you have. Amen. Give everything you got and allow him to um, use you. 
um, without hesitation. So we thank God again for um, this privilege to be in the presence of God. I want to go straight to our word um, this morning, 1 Samuel chapter 17, 1 Samuel chapter 17, very familiar um, passage of scripture, but I want to use this um, as an encouraging word to all of you who are um, with us this morning, 1 Samuel uh, chapter 17, and I want to begin our reading at verse number 4. When you have it, if you're in a person, you may stand to your feet um, in reverence to the word of God. And while I'm saying that, if you're at home and you want to stand up, you can do that too. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17, um, verse number 4, it reads in this manner, a champion named Goliath, who was from Gath, came out of the Philistine camp. He was over nine feet tall. He had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of scaled armor of bronze weighing 5,000 shekels on his legs. He wore bronze greaves and a bronze javelin was slung on his back. His spear shaft was like a weaver's rod and its iron point weighed 600 shekels. His shield bearer went ahead of him. Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, why do you come out and line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? And are you not the servant of Saul? Choose a man and have him come down to me. If he is able to fight and kill me, we will become your subjects. But if I overcome him and kill him, you will become our subjects and serve us. Now, I'm just going to stop reading um, there because the text within itself that I'm preaching from is uh, the entirety of that particular story. But you all may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Um, 1 Samuel chapter 17. Um, I want to talk about um, this story, but I want to use it to encourage all of you with just two words, and those words are push through, push through, okay, push through. Uh, I've always, and I'm always at times, struck, seized, and captured by the language of the Bible uh, and by the people in the Bible, but I'm even more amazed and astonished and astounded by God's performances in the Bible, even when life seems to be very serene and the perfect, ideal, quiet, calm, under control, and you might even feel as though things are tough in your life. But in life, there are always moments of uncertainty. There always seem to be some intimidating and threatening force hanging large on the horizon to scare you out of your agenda and even out of your schedule, to attack your ambitions, uh, to minimize your desires, and also insult your intentions. In other words, there are some enemies and some issues that are determined to make you uh, retreat or go back, relapse, or just quit the assignments that have been assigned to your hands. Life seems to always give us a repeat of things that we have seen before. So when I stumbled up, up on 1 Samuel and about the life of David, a shepherd boy who encounters a giant from the bullying nation of the Philistines, I am blown away, and I'm sure you are too, by the contents that came to the surface. As we look in this chapter and as we closely look at the life of David and Goliath and the things that they had to deal with, it's buried in plain sight. Here we meet a boy who is busy on a journey and a task for his father. In a dialogue with his father, his daddy says to him, your brothers are at war and I want you to go out there and check on them. Uh, take them a little bread, um, um, some roasted grain, and a little cheese for the commander. And I want you to bring me some assurances. In other words, he says, I really just want to, to know how they are actually doing. 
And I hope and pray that you're going to bring me back some very, very good news. And so amazingly, when you look closely, you will see this boy who is the youngest of all of the eight sons that Jesse has. He is the youngest of them all. And the older brothers, as you know this text, are now out on the battlefront fighting against this army that has continued to threaten, but also to antagonize the people of God. For over a hundred, well, several hundred of years, the Bible basically says that they are warring against them and they are trying to tear their neighbors down, the people that from Gat. This is where Goliath actually lives. But I want you to notice in the text, notice who they are fighting against. They are warring against the city of Gath, the city who has one of their prize fighters by the name Goliath, who stands, according to the text, nine feet nine inches tall. Watch this. He has over 125 pounds of just armor. The tip of his spear weighs 15 pounds. He's one, to me, is, that seems to be very intimidating. He's one that makes strong comments. He makes weightlifting champions look like chumps. He has a snarls uh, among him that really says that I am deeper than what you've ever imagined. He's tougher than steak, as somebody had rightly said. A nine foot nine inch giant standing with a clear message about his challenges. Challenges that are clear and straight to the point and pointed at the army of God. And now in the midst of this giant, here comes this little boy who has just checked out from shepherding duties of watching and tending the sheep. And now he wants to become a warrior. It's amazing to me that this man, this giant Goliath, issues the statement that we don't have to, uh, to share our blood. We don't all have to fight. Just send out a man. And if he can beat me, we will be your subjects. But if I beat you, you will be my subjects. And I think that a good way to fight a war, just send the presidents out and let them fight against one another. And I promise you that the wars against the nations will actually stop. Goliath said, this is what I need you to do. Send me a man. And if that man should happen to take me down, then my army will go down with them too. But if I take your men down, then you and I, all of your people will do just what uh, he said he would do. Uh, then here comes David. Watch this. Uh, David, the boy that came uh, to drop off some bread and some cheese and some roasted grain, who hears the threatening threats against the people of God, now he looks for five rocks to deal with Goliath. It's very interesting to me what the text shows us about David and Goliath. And what's so funny here is that within the entire army, where you'll find some men bragging about their ranks and how tough they are, yet we can't find no one to volunteer to go out and fight. Nobody wants to go out and fight this terrorist until David shows up on the scene. All of the muscle flexing, the weight pumping, uh, the barbell pressing soldiers uh, wouldn't say that I'll go. Everybody talked a good game, but they wouldn't put up for a fight. So it was left up to this shepherd boy who has a little pouch on his side and a slingshot and says, I can handle him. Here I see something, and believe it or not, we have some giants that have against their own thoughts, and they are trying their very best to make us feel like we can't go on. 
When you have those moments, those disruptive forces in your life, those disrespectful people in your life, uh, those distractions in your life, uh, and you have all these things that keep you from the work of God, uh, they are giants looking to intimidate the people of God. Um, but I believe that God still have some giants. Uh, uh, he has some giants that will come our way that will teach us uh, that there is a David living on the inside of us. Uh, there are some Davids uh, available still ready to fight uh, the giant. Um, when you look at this, uh, I, I know that you may not think of it this way, but this is actually laughable. You know, when you think about David and Goliath, um, it's like putting a, a toothpick against a tornado or a small dog or like a tricycle race against the 18 wheeler that leads me to even go deeper and ask have you ever felt like you were up against something so big and you felt so small that you couldn't handle it something that seemed to be intimidating but once you find out that you need to go ahead and do what you need to do. You need to keep pushing because some negativity is not worth your time. Some things should not capture your attention because you have gotten to the point whether you're good if you're here, you're good if they're gone. You've made up in your mind that this problem is consuming my energy and I cannot focus because if I keep allowing this giant to be in my life, it'll always keep me thinking about what's next for me. What I've learned is that life will make sure that we have our turns with a giant. Uh, everybody deals with uh, their giants. Um, David is facing this giant with only a slingshot and five stones. And the giant tip of this spear, watch this, weighs 15 pounds. And my question this morning to you is, have you ever felt like what you have in your hand is not equipped enough to handle the situation that you're facing. Uh, this boy shows us something. Watch this. Uh, he had only five stones, but realize what five actually represents. Five is the number of grace. Five is God's goodness. Here's a nugget for somebody this morning. When the devil is on your track and you, you need to do something different, you need to grab on to what I call your five. You, you need to get five minutes of prayer. You need to do five minutes of rest, five minutes of peace, and then sometimes you got to get the five stones to defeat your giants because, listen to me, giants do fall. And you need to understand that it's not about having a whole lot of armor on or it's not about having everything around you to help you fight. You just got to know how to fight. I need to speak to some real people this morning who have faced some giants this year and you have allowed some giants to put you in a corner and you are not easily convinced that giants really do fall. Let me give you some good news this morning. I need to tell somebody that you can overcome your giants. You can adapt the right attitude in dealing with your giant. You can realign your focus. You can rearrange your sight. You can go in another direction. And the Bible says that your giants will fall. They won't be able to hold you down. You got to keep Keep pushing. You got to push through your problems. You, they will not keep you down. They're not going to pull you down. They're not going to put you in a place where you can't overcome it. You can overcome it, but you got to chase after the things of God and stop chasing 
empty promises. Stop chasing empty dreams. Stop chasing all of the things that keep you bound. You will be broke trying to keep up with some folk because you don't have the money that they have. You will be miserable trying to be what everybody wants you to be because you don't have what they have. If you just be you, watch God use you. There are giants everywhere, giants of deception. The Bible talks about giants in this text, but the dictionary says, uh, he def the Webster basically defines a giant like this, a being with human form but superhuman size and strength. In other words, Webster says that it is a person or a thing of unusually great size, power, and importance. So watch what I'm saying. A giant is an object that is the same as you, but it just has more than you do. It, is, it has feet like you, but it's bigger. It has hands like you, but it's wider. It has money like you, but just more of it. Giants are nothing but intimidators. Watch this. And I know that you may not think of it this way, but I haven't seen any giants in my life that I could not handle with the power of God. God can help you to overcome those things that seem to be bigger than you. You got to recognize who you are in Christ and what you are operating with. Our giants are not like this giant in the text. They may not have a sword or they may not have a shield, but they do come in other ways. They come in the form of bills that we can't pay. They come in the form of a past that we cannot shake. They come in the the form of a future that we cannot face. They come in the form of church members that are negative or those who don't understand the knowledge of God. They come standing over your desk at work. They come as a child that you cannot train. They come in the form of people you can't communicate with. They come in the form of people that you can't understand. Our giants bring us people that you can't never please. They bring us habits that will never satisfy. They come as a sword. But watch this. The text says these giant, this giant feels as though he can intimidate this shepherd boy. And let me just throw in this. Giants have their own agenda. And their agenda is to stay in your ear or even or either in your face. Because even when the word says he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel for this and let him come down to me. You know, let's be truthful this morning. Giants become scary. They become scary because they stay in your face and in your ears saying what this text says. And giants are not honest with you. They'll tell you anything. They'll make you believe that the sun is shining and knowing that rain is everywhere. Giants will lie to your face. Giants will have, have, they will think that you don't know they're lying, but they'll keep on lying. Giants seem to scare us. But I want you to know this morning that your enemy or your giant can be defeated. Any oppressor, whether it's a person or some trivial thing or something small or anything, I need you to know giants can be conquered. Victory is promised to the person who trusts God and call upon his name for power and help. Well, one of the most famous stories in all the Bible is the story of David and Goliath. And this story teaches all of us great lessons. The story is a captivating drama that attracts both the hearer and the storyteller. It is one of the most well-known stories in all literature about overcoming impossible odds. David says you can keep 
pushing through and you can win if you stay focused. And I need to tell somebody this morning that you got this. You, you can handle this. You can overcome this. You, you can get through this moment. Don't let your giants have you afraid. Don't let sickness make you feel as though it's not, it's not going to work out. You got this. You, you got God on your side. You got victories under your belt. You've won before. You've had some setbacks before. But every time you come out on top, you've, you, have, you have a history with God. You've watched him do it, not just for other people. You've watched him do small things in your life. Don't be, don't operate in fear as though God can't help you. You can get your degree. You, you can buy your house. You can buy a car. You, you, can, you can overcome the negative things in your life. You can get a high school diploma. You can get a better job. You can go back to school and get your GED. You can do things. You can fix your credit. You can fix your marriage. You can fix your life. You can do greater things, but you got to keep pushing. You got to keep believing. You got to stop making excuses and blaming everybody else for what's wrong in your life. And every time a challenge comes, doesn't mean you got to get your car keys and you got to get, you got to leave. Every challenge come doesn't mean you got to move to another city or another state or another nation. Every challenge that come doesn't mean you got to go and hide in the house and never come out again. Every challenge that comes don't mean you got to speak negative about people who are trying to help you and blame them for you not wanting to move forward. Stop making excuses because giants come into everybody's life but they don't overtake everybody. You can overcome this. There are some who thought this was an impossible defeat but through the power of God, David says you think it's impossible, but I'm going to show you what God can do. And because of this victory, the Bible says he stands as a dynamic example before the world. He is an example that what can be accomplished by the person who believes in God. Because you may not have any money, but if you've got some, power, you've got some belief in your system, you can overcome some things. And I know that there are some of you that can understand that there were times that you didn't have anything, but God God made it possible for you. There were times that you knew for a fact in your mind that you were going down, but the power of God helped you through those difficult moments. Let me just give you this here. The record is that the Philistines invaded Israel at Shekach, which was located about 15 miles west of Bethlehem in the territory of Judea. The invasion, if you remember, was immediately countered by Saul and his army. They camped in the valley of Elah. Then the battle lines were drawn. The Bible says the armies faced each other on the opposite hill surrounding the valleys. If you could just look at the scene, there were the Israelite forces, thousands and thousands of soldiers, battalion after battalion, standing on their battle lines. And let me show you this. Uh, opposite of them was an invading army of thousands who bitterly hated the Israelites. Uh, and the Bible said they sought to enslave and subject them uh, to serve the Philistine nation. Uh, a spirit of apprehension entered into their hearts. Uh, but an even greater fear was about to surge through the veins, uh, which was a paralyzing fear. Uh, all of a sudden, Goliath stepped forth uh, from the Philistine ranks crying out uh, this challenge to uh, the Israelites. Uh, and you know this story. He shows up to be very horrifying. He was a mighty warrior. Uh, he looked uh, like he was intimidating. Uh, he could, you felt uh, when he showed up that he was going to overpower you uh, with his strength. Uh, uh, then he spoke crying out in defiance, uh, mocking and ridiculing you. Uh, that's the devil, y'all. Uh, 
making you feel like you can't go on. And they line up in front of them. Couldn't find nobody to stand up and fight against him. But I want you to really pay attention. He is the mighty warrior. He's the one that never loses because he's bigger than everybody. He has a lot to say. He knows how to make you feel like you're small. But then all of a sudden, David shows up. He says, I'll fight him. You just bring him down here. I'll do what I've got to do. And then in verse 46, the day the Lord will deliver you into my hands. I'll strike you down, the Bible says. He told him, I'll even cut off your head. The very day I give the carcasses of the Philistine army, I'll give it to the birds. I'll give it to the wild animals. And the whole world is about to know that there is a God in Israel. What I've come to tell you this morning is that you've got to push through and know that no matter what's coming your way, listen to me, there is a God in Israel. There's a God over your circumstances. There is a God that can handle anything. And if somebody would just understand uh, clearly this morning is that you are not here by accident. Your giants did not come just to break you down, but they've come to make you strong. And if you've never been through anything, you wouldn't know how to fight your next giant. If you've never been brought down to nothing, you wouldn't understand that God is up to something. Sometimes God got to bring things into your life to make you feel like you're not going to make it. But I've come to tell you this morning that you got what it takes because you got a God that will help you push through. I know that I'm talking to somebody this morning who understands how to push through. You've had to push through some things. You've had to cry so much before. But God gave you the strength to push through that moment. You've had to go through some times where you didn't know how you were going to survive. But God gave you the strength. And now you can say, I pushed through. I kept on trusting God. When everybody else walked off and left me, I stayed with the Lord. I pushed through some uncertain times in my life. You didn't know I was going to make it. You didn't know what I was going through. But I kept on pushing because I had a God that was in my life. And this same God that brought me through all of that is the same one that's going to take me to the next. And I know that somebody this morning just need to hear these words. Just keep on pushing. Just push through your pain. Push through your problems. Stop allowing fear to make you feel like you're not going to make it. You're going to make it. If you will just hear me this morning, I just need you to understand that you are bigger than your circumstances. You're bigger than your problems. You're bigger than your fears. You're bigger than everything that's messed up because God has given you power. God has given you might. God has given you strength. God has fought many battles and sometimes you don't need to wait until the battle is over. You don't need to wait until it's ending. You need to give God the praise in the middle of your fight, in the middle of your battle. I'm talking to somebody this morning who just need a little encouragement to just push through keep on fighting keep on believing and watch God turn this around anybody need God to turn some things around anybody need God to fix some things anybody need God 
to show up but not just show up but you need God to show out when it show up you need God to straighten some things out that's crooked in your life you need God to give you peace you need God to give you joy you need God to help you before you lose your mind I've come to tell you this morning you gotta keep on pushing because the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong but it's given to those that endure till the end can't you see that even rain runs out of water can't you see that every trial that you had sometimes you don't see it but the sun will shine I'm looking for somebody that can see the sun peeping through the clouds I know it may be bad but God is about to restore God is about to revive come here giant come here problem I've got a God that can handle anything can somebody give him praise because you know that every trial every storm every test makes you stronger if you've never been sick your shout wouldn't be the same about him being a healer if you've never been broke your shout wouldn't be the same about God to be your supplier if you've never been down your shout is never the same when he lifts you up I've got to give him praise for the moments that I didn't think I was going to make it but I kept on pushing I kept on trusting leaning on the Lord believing he was about to turn this thing around I'm talking to somebody who's ready for God to give them what they've been praying for come on give him praise maybe you can't praise him because you don't see it but if you hear me this morning you need to praise him because he's about to do it somebody ought to holler do it Lord do it Lord somebody ought to give him praise do it Lord do it right now work on my mind work on my heart do it Lord work on my spirit and if you do it I'm going to praise you if you don't do it I'm still going to praise you I'm going to give you praise I'm going to bless your name this is the same David that said I'll bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth can somebody here give him praise just because you watched him work you've seen him do it can you give him praise because you know that there is nobody like our God he's strong he's mighty nobody like our God he shows up early stays real late there's nobody like our God they thought that our God wouldn't show up but I can tell you every time I call on him he always shows up on time can somebody shout he's an on time God may not come when you want him to come but he's always somebody shout always always on time you gotta push through your problems you gotta push why don't you tell somebody just push through it if you push through it gotta give you more than 
you ever had. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Somebody ought to praise him for what's about to happen. I know it looks dark. I know it looks dreary. But you ought to praise him for what God is about to do. Anybody expecting great things from the Lord? If you need great things, you ought to give God a great praise. Come on, you. Come on, praise him. Come on, let's bless him. Come on, let's give him glory. Let everything that have breath, everything. Come on, let's bless him. Everybody ought to bless him. Everybody ought to bless him because you know how important it is to push through. If you didn't push through, through some tough moments, you would have lost it. I'm grateful that God has given us the spirit to keep going when we don't feel like going. Because the truth is, some people can't keep pushing. They stop. And they do what they've got to do. A lot of things you wanted to quit before. You wanted to give up on. You wanted to move past it. But you couldn't. Because you're tied to certain things. Tied to a check. You couldn't quit. I can't quit. I want to, but I can't. Check won't let you. Tied to things that keep you, keep you down. But I want you to know that God did not give you the spirit of fear, but he's given you love, power, and a sound mind. You may lose a few things in the battle, but you ought to thank God you kept your mind. You kept your mind through the difficult moments, and God has helped you to push through your giant moments. They show up, they strong, they're mighty. All you have, maybe five, sort of like David, five things. I know the scripture talks about the things he had. But you know what? I thought about it even on another level. Sometimes when the enemy comes or when the giant comes into your life, you're less than this. You might not have the five things that he had, but God still give you five senses. And he'll keep you in those desperate moments because it looks like you're about to lose. I need to speak to you today and tell you you're not a loser. I need to say that louder. You're not a loser. You're not a loser. You may be down, but the clock is still ticking. And God can turn things around in an instant. It don't take him long to fix what's wrong in your life. And I know there are people everywhere, Facebook, YouTube, and even in this sanctuary that will agree with me that sometimes God will come through seemingly at the last minute. But when he comes through, I don't know if you feel that, but when he does come through, won't he come through? Have you ever had a moment where you said, Lord, you sure did come through? When you have those moments, you understand what I'm preaching about. Lord, I didn't know how it was going to happen. But Lord, you came through. And when you came through, you didn't just fix what was wrong. You fixed some other stuff I didn't even know was wrong. That's what God will do. You didn't just straighten this out. You fixed everything. And now I don't have to, I don't have to uh, tiptoe around this because you done fixed it all. That's what God will do. He'll give you peace. And when God puts a period at the end of your chapter he makes it better and he makes you understand I got to keep pushing why am I doing this because God has been the source of my strength and I'm grateful today just through David and Goliath classic story you know it better than I do but he was better at the end because he wasn't afraid to push through his giant issue. I want to take this moment and speak to a life, a soul, a heart, a person who's unsaved, unchurched, and you're ready to give your life unto the Lord. I want to extend this invitation to you this morning. 
Because you need Jesus in every place of your life. Not just in some places. You don't need him just when you're doing what you do. You need to spend quality time with him. And if you're ready for him to make that change in your life, I want to extend this invitation for you this morning. As we extend this invitation, please know that you can connect with the Hurricane Church. All you have to do is click online membership. And once you click online membership, you can complete the online membership form. You can do that right where you are. You can do that right where you are. And you can allow him to be the lifter of your head. You can allow, allow him to be everything that you need him to be. All you have to do right where you are is accept him as your savior in your heart and follow our details that are placed before you on the screen. You can do that and you can do it with a sincere heart. And once you click online membership, we will follow up and make sure that we're giving you what you need for your walk with the Lord. But if you're in person in worship right here in this sanctuary, unsaved and the same goes for you if you're here and you run church and you say, I want to become a part of this ministry. Uh, all you have to do wherever you are is stand to your feet. And what we'll do is we'll come to you and minister to you and allow you to be what God has called you to be. We've done what the Lord has asked of us. The invitation is extended. Please do what you know you need to do for your life. Don't take it for granted because you can't make it in this world without the Lord. And so at this time, we're going to continue on. I want to also extend this invitation for those of you who are connecting with us who'd like to give into this ministry. Uh, please know that we are a giving ministry. We're a life-giving ministry. But this moment, we want you to exercise your gifts in support of this ministry. We have four ways to give. You can give by mail. You can give by share faith. You can give through the Givelify app. And you can also use cash out to give. These are the four ways that we offer for those of you that are not here, those of you that are online watching. Those are your four ways. But if you're here in person, we have something set up in the vestibule of our church waiting for you to drop off your tithes and your offerings. We are a life-giving church, and God's been good to us. And you know what? When you bless God, God always bless you. And you know what? Let's be truthful. There have been times that we didn't bless God, and he still blessed us. But we are grateful that our God continues to support us through everything that he said he would do. You got to trust in the Lord. You got to keep pushing through. And you got to believe that tomorrow, tomorrow for you is better than your present moment. I'm going to keep pushing through. No matter what comes my way, I'm going to raise my head up, and I'm going to believe that God is bigger than my problems. He's bigger than my circumstances. Can you take a moment wherever you are and let's give God praise for helping us. One more time, can the church say amen? amen. Truly we thank and praise God for all of you who are with us this morning, whether it's in person or whether it's those of you who are connecting with us on Facebook and YouTube. We certainly appreciate all of you for being a part of this worship experience. And I believe God um, is going to continue to bless us to push through those very tough moments in our lives. Thank you, thank you, thank you for those of you who continue to support the work of the ministry here. We certainly appreciate everything that you do uh, for the Lord. All right, that's all I have. That's it. I pray that your day will continue to be blessed. I pray that the favor of God will follow you, and whenever, wherever you go, the favor of God will be all upon your life. I want you to be blessed. I don't want you to walk around with your head down like you can't make it. I want you to know that God's been good to you, and because he's been good to you, it ought to show up in what you say as well as what you do. So with that being said, I'm going to ask all of you, wherever you are, if you can bow with me for a word of prayer, and this is going to end our worship. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for this moment. 
We give you praise for giving us the strength, the fortitude. Thank you, God, for helping us in our moments of weakness. We thank you for all that you continue to do. And God, just like David, we know that you will show up for us. God, right now, bless your people. Bless everybody who's connected with the Hurricane Church. And we'll be careful to give your name praise. Thank you again for this moment. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And let us all agree everywhere and say amen. Consider yourselves dismissed. And God bless all of you for sharing with us.